Well, there you go. Welcome to this morning's lesson. Um, you can add that to one of the things I've always wanted to be, right? I wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be an actor. I'd like to be a rock star. I'd love to be the drummer, right? Because the drummer <laughs> is the one, it's like a good student. The drummer's always there, on time, regular, turning up, but full of surprises every now and again. Fantastic, great. So, listen, I thought I'd have a bit of music just to wake you up and to welcome, welcome you to today's live lesson. It's Thursday, the 25th of February. Very happy to be here. And today, very excited because, as always, we've got an interesting topic. We're going to be talking about transport today. Different modes of transport how you get around town and how you can talk about transport and travel, generally speaking, as we go along. So lots of interesting, exciting stuff to look at. Um, brilliant. Let's start off. Let's begin with a little intro for you. You can see I've been experimenting again. I've been making little videos, doing little bits and pieces. I always like to do a bit of experimentation. Welcome, welcome again today. We're on the topic of transport, um, which is going to be really, really interesting, right? So what are we going to look at today? Let me come over here. We're going to be looking at transport. Um, we're going to talk about <clears throat> what we're going to talk about. Come down. Vocabulary, as always, have a little bit of language and vocabulary. We'll be looking at collocations and phrasal verbs. Um, also, we've got a guest today, right? Fiona. Now, Fiona is a teacher. She's an IELTS uh, professional as well. Um, and she, hey, that's funny. I can look right between. Hello. Um, Fiona will be joining us um, shortly at about half past nine. We're going to be chatting about today's topic of transport. And if you have any other questions around IELTS, I'm sure she can help you. We'll be looking at useful phrases, things like I travel back and forth. What does that mean, I travel back and forth? Well, you'll find out this morning. And also some idioms, you know, things like my wife is a backseat driver. What does that mean? Because backseat, how do you drive from the back seat? It's all very clever and I'll show you today. Of course, we'll be doing some sample answers and we'll be finishing up with our favourite game of Kahoot to help us review and revise lots of the stuff that is going on there. Fantastic. All sounds really, really interesting. So let me see um, what is happening up here. Come back in. Who's in the house? Let me have a look. Tarek. Hello. Nice to see you as well. Um, Ashraf. Good to see you here. Mano, Manu. Hello. Nina says, I have a great sense of humour. Thank you very much, Nina. Hanen from Iraq, nice to see you. Um, Gangsterhood got 8.5 in speaking. Hey, Gangsterhood, I hope you didn't have a gun and uh, just kind of threaten the examiner. <laughs> Give me an 8.5 or else. Well done, brilliant. Um, Srijana from Nepal, hello, nice to see you. And who's we've got to also Karuna from Nepal. Brilliant. Chelsea from the Philippines. Um, Carolina, Carolina from Spain. Hola, buenos dias. Great. Good to see you all here. Lots of people from different parts of the world. Nice. <clears throat> OK, so we're going to begin. We're going to begin. Where are we going to begin? We're going to begin with that essential vocabulary bit, right? Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> Topic is transport. Uh, vocabulary. Let's begin with vocabulary. That looks like a good place to start. Look, I've been experimenting again. I've now got my notes. Look at that. <laughs> Great. I can go and put myself into that little hole in the corner and you can see the notes more clearly. Um, essential vocabulary. Fantastic. Um, so we're going to begin with essential vocabulary. 
So what am I going to say about this? Public transport, okay? There's, um, I asked my Facebook group the other day about public transport. Actually, your favorite form of transport, <clears throat> um, whether it's public or private. But I noticed some people do get a bit confused about what is transport. So I don't think walking is transport, right? Because um, I think that's just walking, get, going somewhere or jogging, not really transport. I think you need a special vehicle to take you there. So public transport, as defined by Wikipedia, says it's open to the general public, right? Now, that's a good collocation, the general public with the very good collocation, right? Um, you know, the general public like to take buses or the general public take trains, but I prefer to go by car, for example. So the general public means everybody, right? The public. It's open to the general public. It's usually with a schedule. So it usually has a time, a fixed time you can go. Not always, like a taxi doesn't have a fixed schedule, but usually. Regular routes, you go to a certain place and, and you pay. Now, not always. You don't always pay. I do know that sometimes some buses are free, um, but you don't always pay. So typically, you know, we're talking about buses, trains, monorails. I remember in Kuala Lumpur, you've got the monorail that goes above the city. The tramways, even in Manchester, now we've got, well, we've had a tram for many years. Light rail, um, subways, which in, in London or in England, we call the underground. But that's only in England, I think. Uh, taxis. And in many countries, um, people were telling me their different names. You have tuk-tuks, rickshaws, um, the all sorts of weird and wonderful names that came up. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sure you'll tell me some of the others. <laughs> yes. The tube as well. Ashraf, you're absolutely right. In London, also, we call this the tube, right? The, the subway or the underground is the tube. But that's in only in London, I think. Cable cars, possibly, right? You may have cable cars which take you up, ferry you up to the top of the mountain or to wherever you're going. Um, Mr. Perfect talks about the cab. Yep, a tax, another word for a taxi is a cab. <clears throat> yes. Hey, yes, Vinita, thank you very much. <laughs> 500 views, only 88 likes. Whoops, don't worry. People are warming up, right? Um... Savita says they have the monorail from uh, Vivo Mal to Sentosa in Singapore. That's true. Uber? Yeah. Uber has become a naughty word or a bad word in some countries. The taxi drivers are not happy with it at all, right? <clears throat> Great. All sorts of things there. In Japan, it's also the underground. Ah, that's interesting. Or the metro. There's the other name, right? The metro. Very good. I'd forgotten about that one. Quite a lot of countries, they call it the metro. Especially France, if I remember correctly. Le métro. <clears throat> Brilliant. Train, train lines. Yes, bikes as well. There's another one to add. Bikes and bicycles. So bikes could be motorbike or it could be uh, a, a normal push bike, right? Bikes. If they're public transport, yes, that's if they're they're rented bikes, right? Or free bikes, but normally rented bikes. Because that moves me on to private transport. Oh, by the way, public transport, you can also say public transportation or public transit, right? These are not easy words, so try them with me. First of all, transport. Now... This is interesting, right? And um, I'll tell you why. Because on Saturday, I'm releasing a video all about pronunciation. Everything you need to know about pronunciation. And this word comes up in the video, right? Transport. Transport. Can you hear the difference between transport, transport? Can you hear that? Number one, transport. Number two, transport. What's the difference? Hmm. What's the difference? 
<clears throat> Difference is, number one, right, transport is the noun, public transport. Number two, transport is the verb. I transport the goods to the warehouse. I transport the goods to the, to the market. Different. So pronunciation is really important, right? So here we're talking about public transport. Can you say that with me? <clears throat> public transport. Transport. Public transport. Great. I'm going to underline the stress. And notice this one. Public transportation. Pertation. Spertation. Spertation. Transportation. Can you hear it? Public transportation. Good. And the last one is this one. Public transit. Spot on. Public transit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The, so the stress changes. Um, really important. Um, lots of things you're mentioning here. Um, you've got, yeah, intonation, stress, word stress, verb noun. All of that is coming up in Saturday's recorded video around midday Saturday. It's everything you need to know about pronunciation. <laughs> it sounds like an advert. Everything you need to know about pronunciation for IELTS speaking. It's true. It's a long video, but I think you'll enjoy it. Now, um, Elsie, going to bring in Elsie. She's got a nice question. Mr. O'Hare, how about public transportation in the coastal area? Ferry is one of them. Absolutely. Very, very good. Thank you, Elsie, for reminding me. And I should know that because I live in the coastal area, right? So ferries, hello, not ferries, ferries. Yeah, ships, boats, <clears throat> all of those. Ferries in particular, we have a ferry here from Spain up to England and Ireland. Private transport, moving on, we can have car, bicycle, scooter, boat, if you've got your own boat, right? If it's your own, of course, different from the public boat. Horse, right? Possibly. Roller skates, possibly. I'm not sure about that. Some people said roller skates and skateboard. I guess it's a, whoops, skateboard. I guess it's a kind of transport. It's a kind of vehicle, right? Yeah, possibly. Jeepneys in the Philippines. Let's share a few of these. These are quite interesting. I'll just put them a bit lower. Um, so Nina says jeepneys in the Philippines and I saw a picture of those thank you very much yes Emmy you've missed lots of classes don't worry you're here today <laughs> a cruise well it's a good question cruise is not the transportation right cruise is the holiday or the movement it's not the form of transport right it's like I go on a cruise I go on a holiday so it's not the transport, it's more the activity, yeah? To go on a cruise, like Tom Cruise, ha ha. To go on a cruise, that's more the activity, yes. <laughs> so what is coastal area? Coastal area is next to the sea. It's the land next to the sea. Interesting question. A few of you asked about that. Private jet, exactly. <laughs> Your avatar. Come on, seriously, Seaman. Seaman Custo. I love that avatar. Private jet, yes. Chopper, which is like a helicopter. Yes. Farima, yes, I do save this live. You can go and watch it again on YouTube or Facebook. Um, train. Okay, great. Pony. Moped. That's a nice one. Moped is a kind of motorbike. Yep. So let me add here scooter, moped, um, basically a motorbike. All of those. Nice. Good. There are plenty more, right? Plenty more we can talk about. 
So um, I'm going to move on and we're going to have a look at listening and identifying the means of transport. We're going to do this quick activity, take about 10 minutes before we bring in our guest today. Um, okay. Ooh. So here, listen. I want you to listen and identify the means of transport. Wow. Okay. So you can probably guess some of them, right? But look at the numbers. Number one, she got into her blah, blah, blah. Number two, I took a blah, blah, blah. Three, she caught the blah, blah, blah. So there's a clue there, right? She caught the. There's a clue. It's not a, it's the. The blah, blah, blah took off. There's a big clue. She was lucky enough to travel by. Hmm. So here, you're also going to learn the grammar and how to use them. But I want you to, to listen, right? Let's listen to the first sound. And then in the comments below, you can write down what you think the answer is. So here is number one. <clears throat> Are you ready? I'm not ready. Number one. Right, that was number one. <laughs> Interesting ideas, anybody? Mm. Mm. Okay, number two. That was number two. <clears throat> See what you've got. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> Number three. That sounds like um, Chinese with a Taiwanese accent. <clears throat> mm, there's a clue. Right. That was number three. See, well, you get some interesting ideas here. I'm going to go over the answers later. Number four. Interesting. Any ideas for number four? Yep, got a few coming in. And number five. That's quite tricky, but you may be able to get it. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to go through the answers. Let's have a quick look at what you've said here, right? I'll share a few. Sh number one, right? Mm. Where was number one? Who got down number one? I'm going to go right back. Quite a few of you said, <clears throat> as in, uh, interestingly, sh t -t 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 oh, where? where are you? Why can't I find you? Oh dear, hang on. No, you're not letting me work, are you? <sighs> Wait a minute. I'm going to try and share your messages, but it's not letting me. Oh dear, it's not letting me. Can't share your comments. That is such a shame. Um, I'll just read out a few. So number one, Lok Mai was right. Salman Reggie was right. Um, you talked about... Number one was the car. She got into her car, right? Exactly. Number two, she took a... Number two, this one was... It was the boat or the ship, right? That was number two, the boat or the ship. Um, so quite a few of you got that. Well done. 
Number three, she caught the... It sounds like the train. A few of you said train, but quite a few of you got the right one. It was the subway. She caught the subway. Number four was the... Bing bong. It's the plane. The plane took off. And number five, funnily enough, was the... It sounds a bit like a plane, and many of you said plane, but it was the helicopter. Although a few of you, Daisy got helicopter, well done. Uh, Ingrid got helicopter as well, as did a Manjula, well done. You've got all of those. So, um, so just notice the grammar as well, right? With car, she got into her car. We say to get into a car or into a taxi, but we say... I got on the bus or the train or the plane. It's a bit strange and it's a bit confusing, but for some reason, car and taxi is into and bus, train and plane are on, to get on, right? You can say to take a taxi, to take a bus, to take a boat, to take a ship. So take can be used with all of those or to catch, right? To take or to catch. Um, <clears throat> let me do it the other way around. Let me put it in bold. So she caught the subway. Notice the pronunciation, caught, caught. So catch, caught. She caught the subway or the underground or the metro <clears throat> or the tube. Um, so what do planes do? Planes take off. Let me show you so you can see me. The plane takes off and then the plane doesn't take down. No, <laughs> don't take down the plane, please. The plane lands because it comes to the land, right? And so the plane took off and later landed. <clears throat> so we talk about the plane taking off and the plane landing. So important words. And to travel by... We can also say to travel by bus, to travel by helicopter. I like to travel <clears throat> by train or by plane. <clears throat> so you can use by. <coughs> I travel by train. I travel by taxi. I travel by car. I travel by uh, plane. All of those, I think just about all of them, you can use travel by. So useful collocations, right? Excellent. Good. <laughs> Brilliant. Now then, what's next? How do I do that? Clever, eh? Now then, we're going to move on because this morning... Um, I'm going to jump around a bit. I am going to look at some language and uh, collocations and stuff. But first, I'm going to bring on our guest today. And this is your opportunity, our opportunity, to listen to another accent because she has a bit of a Welsh accent, right? Um, now then, I don't know if you're familiar with the Welsh accent. Our guest today is Fiona. Um slightly Welsh accent because originally she's from Wales and she'll tell you more about that. Wales is next to England, right? You've got, I don't know if you remember the, whoops, if you remember the map of England, you've got England, Scotland to the north and then you've got over here, you've got over here Wales and then you've got Ireland is a separate island. Um, so, and you've got Northern Ireland, of course. So, Fiona, we're going to introduce Fiona. I'm I'm going to need two seconds, just two seconds, to call her and bring her in. Brilliant. Good. So, just bear with me. This could go belly up. You never know. <laughs> but hopefully, fingers crossed, it will work out. Okay. Let's see. Badum, 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 badum. Now then, hello there. <laughs> Hi, Keith. 
Hi, Fiona. How are you doing? OK, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You're looking very good today and all neat and tidy. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, I'm going to bring you in to okay, the um, um, into the room. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready, yes. Fantastic. Great. Um, are you watching on YouTube as well, by the way? Yes, I am. So you'll be, you can see some of the comments that are coming up. Great. Um, let's see. There is Fiona. And let's put us together. Right. I think we've got us in there together. Great. Good. Um, just give me two ticks. Let me take this off. It becomes all very technical. Right. Good. So, Fiona, welcome. Nice to Thank see you. you. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's really good to see you here. Um, I know we just chatted the other day to work out the technical side of things. Um, so we're going to, in a moment, kind of have a conversation around transport, moving and, and looking at different language. But I think it'd be really good for you maybe to introduce yourself a little bit so people know more about you. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having me on. Um, uh, I was listening to what you were saying about my Welsh accent and <laughs> just I've got a really strong Welsh accent. <laughs> So, um, yes, just let me know if I'm going too fast or oh, my Welsh accent is uh, uh, obscuring the meaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm an IELTS teacher and an academic skills tutor. And, um, yeah, I teach students online, prepare students for IELTS like you do. Yeah. Right. Fantastic. Um, and do you, uh, do you teach all the skills or just some skills? Um, all, all of them, yeah. I kind of focus on writing. I know it's the least popular part mm. of IELTS, so right. I, yeah, I do a lot of writing practice. Yeah, right, fantastic. And you mentioned you're originally from Wales. Which part of Wales? Uh, South Wales. That's, it's Carmarthenshire. It's right. quite close to Cardiff, the capital city. Yeah. And where do you live now? I'm in Colchester. Uh, it's quite near to London, just outside London. Right. OK, fantastic. Good. So maybe we can talk a bit about Colchester. I mean, I, I'm going to kick off with, with a question for you. Um, so where you live, I mean, how do you get around Colchester? Well, to be honest, Colchester is quite congested. It's it's quite a small town, but they've it's they've built it up and the infrastructure wasn't really there for a uh, growing population. So mm -hmm. I just tend to walk everywhere. It just tends to be faster than than driving. It, it's much faster on foot. Right. Now, great. That's interesting. I mean, you said it's congested. What do you mean when you say it's congested? Well, you know what it's like at rush hour. Um, everybody has to get into work by nine o'clock. So there's just bumper to bumper cars hardly moving. Um, and the thing that really worries me about it is is the pollution, really. Um, it's just right outside my house and it's the cars are kind of idling with their engines on all the time. And recently there's been so much in the news about how bad that is for air quality. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. Right. Fantastic. I'm going to share very briefly with the students here some of the things that you've said. I'm just going to switch out of our 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 two-way thing so just to point out for everybody here congested when fiona said it's congested um so meaning there are many cars in the rush hour the rush hour is the the time when people go to work or leave work so congested is similar to traffic jams or bumper to bumper is also what fiona said is a really nice expression right the cars are bumper to bumper the bumper is the edge of the car the very front or the very back of the car and also you talked about infrastructure Fiona I mean you did mention the infrastructure of the city what does that mean infrastructure it's just it still has the really small roads that it was built with so it hasn't kind of developed or put anything in place to cope with just a higher level of traffic really right so the infrastructure is kind of it's the it's the roads it's the streets it's the, mm. the buildings and everything mm. fantastic great um i'm just going to put that up as well for people infrastructure the roads the build not the buildings the buildings maybe even bridges and stuff like that 
Brilliant. Good. What's it like where you are? Say that again, sorry? What's it like where you are? What's it like where I am? I think, you know, I live in Santander, right, which is in the north of Spain. Um, I think they've got a really good um, public transportation system. And I actually, I get around on foot as well because it's such a small city. It's just really easy to, to move around on foot. But they've got a great um, bus system, um, mm. very nice buses and bus lanes and bicycle lanes. So there's a rent-a-bike system and there are bicycle lanes set out on many streets. So it's quite safe for cycling. Unlike, I think, London. I tried to cycle in London. I, I, it terrified me. Mm. <laughs> it was so dangerous. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Exactly. Nice expression. It's a nightmare. A nightmare is a really bad thing, right? <laughs> I've seen in Spain that they've made kind of car-free centres in some cities. I don't know if you've experienced that at all, where they've banned cars from going into the centre. Yeah, so we have an area that is a, a pedestrian-only area, mm. um, and so cars are not allowed in. It's a very small area, but it, it's just to limit the congestion, basically. Mm. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, nice. I'm just going to throw these in for the, the guys. It's a nightmare. I'll just put in there. A nightmare is a terrible dream, literally, but metaphorically it just means it's a, a terrible thing, right? You can use that for any situation. You know, I had an IELTS test went badly. It was a nightmare. <laughs> and the pedestrian area is the walk only area. Pedestrian comes from foot and walking, so being on foot. A pedestrian is a person who walks everywhere. So that's that idea. Nice. Um, what else have we got? Travelling. So we've talked a bit about travelling in the city. What about um, things like trains and planes? Do you often travel by plane or, or train? I get the train to Wales, believe it or not. It's about a seven-hour journey. Yeah. Um, it's just so much easier than going by car. Again, uh -huh. the roads are terrible. Um, they're, they're quite dangerous. There's, they're fast, busy roads with a lot of trucks, and I just don't feel very comfortable driving for seven hours um, by myself. Yeah. Um, so I just get on the train. It's quite pleasant now, yeah, especially since COVID. Um, they've just made it much easier um, far fewer people are traveling. Um, it's it's a really pleasant journey compared to the hassle of driving. Right, the hassle of driving. That's a nice expression. Mm. The hassle of driving. What does hassle mean there? The stress, I guess. The stress and constantly worrying that you're going to crash or <laughs> yeah, all of that kind of thing that I hate. I don't know. Do you like driving? I love driving. Do you? Oh, yeah, love it. Absolutely. I can spend hours in a car. I once tr I drove across Texas, right, literally. It's Goodness. it's like a 12-hour drive across the state of Texas. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Wow. But I, wow. I, I like kind of open country driving much more mm -hmm. than inner city driving. Mm. Yeah. It, yeah, that it, would terrify me, driving across America. I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> I was much younger at the time, but it was great. It was great fun, really good. Oh. And not on my own. I was with somebody else, so it was, it was, it was oh. good. Yeah. Um, nice. So I'm just going to share up again. So I thought it was interesting that you said I get the train to Wales because we often say take, um, but you can say get the train. And actually, Fiona then said I get on the train. Um, so there are different ways you can say it, right? You can say to take, travel by, or get on the train. Um, and then the hassle of doing something is a nice expression, the, the stress or the trouble of driving, the hassle of driving and things like that. <laughs> Somebody just says, you're still young, Mr. Keith. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very kind of you. <laughs> Great. So, yes, um, driving is interesting. Have you ever had any kind of delays or have you ever missed a plane or a train? I have missed a plane, yes. Though it was a disaster. I turned up at the airport and they said the plane was eight o'clock and they'd 
sent me a letter to say that the time had changed Mm -hmm. and I just arrived thinking I was there in plenty of time and they just wouldn't let me on and they said the plane was leaving and um, I was really annoyed and uh, I complained and got my money back in the end but it was a nightmare completely ruined the whole holiday you know in the UK you get that one week of sun um, you know and that was the the whole week was a disaster I couldn't get to the location so yeah nightmare what a nightmare indeed but luckily they gave the money back (laughs) they did after a long fight yes (laughs) right (laughs) they said it wasn't their fault and uh right i had to argue that it was right interesting there i'm just going to bring up again some really interesting language i so i missed the plane um when you don't catch the plane if it goes without you we talked about a uh, a nightmare it was a disaster as well again metaphorical because a disaster normally is like something catastrophic um like a natural disaster but here a bit metaphorical and in plenty of time i thought was nice fiona said i arrive in plenty of time um which is kind of with with time to spare it's to have lots of time um and the other expression I thought was nice, he said, I got my money back in the end. So this happened and that happened. And then in the end, I got my money back in, in the final situation. Very nice. Lovely expressions. Great. Um, what else? Hmm. Delays. You've missed a plane. Any? Have you ever had to have a delay like where you you're stuck in a train station or an airport all the time Keith all the time how about you <laughs> again I don't, you can compare the UK and and Spain so I don't I don't know if it's better in Spain but uh, um yeah. so I typically catch the plane from Bilbao to Manchester there's a a plane that goes um regularly and yeah, I would say by and large that there's normally a delay of 30 minutes. So I think it's because that it goes across the, the Bay of Bisc- Biscay and the Bay of Biscay is notorious for bad weather and strong winds. Um, so there is quite often a delay, but it's only a short delay, like 30 minutes or so. Um, so, you you know, I'll end up, probably I end up sitting in the coffee bar in the in the, in the airport just waiting for 30 minutes or so. So it's not a big hassle. Um, It's fine. I think the worst, I mean, I've had disasters where a plane has been delayed and I've been wanting to catch a connecting flight, like when I've gone from Asia to Europe and you miss the connecting flight because the first one was delayed. That's a real pain in the the arse, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, so d- delays can be um, difficult at times. I've got a question now, and this is a very strange question, but, you know, it's an IELTS question. IELTS is notorious for strange questions. But um, what do you think about transport in the future? How do you envisage the future of transportation? I just think it'll be electric. So my son is completely obsessed with Tesla and electric vehicles. So I I get a lot of information from him about how everything's changing. And even this morning on the news, there was something about the government has, um, you know, put a limit on when we can keep producing uh, petrol cars and the car industry is very annoyed about that. Mm. Um, I just think everything's going in that direction. So um, people will keep driving. Actually, there was an IELTS text. I did it on my podcast the other day and it mm. was about um, driverless cars. Mm. But but they predicted that it would be more that people wouldn't own a car, that they would just hire the type of car they wanted for each journey. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if I was going to Wales, I would just hire a, a, a Tesla. That would be nice <laughs> for a week. Mm. And, you know, I wouldn't actually own it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think there'll just be a lot more flexibility and people going electric, I guess. And I, I, I was listening to the radio as well on the same topic, and they were asking the question whether we would have driving licenses in the future or would they become redundant 
Because if you've got driverless cars, do you need a license? Exactly. And, and apparently young people aren't driving um, uh, manual cars, I think. Mm-hmm. They, 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 they've got no interest in driving cars with a gearbox now. Mm-hmm. They're just learning to drive automatic cars. And I mean, when you think about Tesla, it, it can drive, you know, it is automatic in some senses. So, um, yeah, will people need a license? Will they even need to drive? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe you don't need to drive. It was a skill disappeared. And do you trust it? I mean, would you trust a driverless car? <clears throat> I think I trust it more than I trust myself. <laughs> I, think I mean, the technology is so built in, you know, it can avoid collisions. It can predict collisions. It can see what you can't see. It's got kind of infrared capabilities, uh, can see around corners, things like things that humans just can't do I, I i do i kind of trust it more than i trust myself right do you um i think at the this the early stages of development i think it's still risky and i would mm. i wouldn't trust it um mm. but i think once it becomes mainstream then yes mm. i think i, I would trust it because i would tr- I, like you know like you trust that the plane is is on automatic yeah. pilot mo- yes. most of the time and you know, yes, we, we exactly. trust that because it's become mainstream. Um, yeah, so I, I think in that case, yes, yeah. I've, I've just seen so many people's lives have been saved by by Tesla. Well, according to their promotion, of course. Um, they would say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but interesting. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Um, I'm just going to break off again just to bring up some of the language that was really useful. I think transport in the future. So we talk about electric vehicles, right? Um, or actually, it's quite it's different. Um, driverless cars. So electric vehicles is without um, without gas or petrol. I think Fiona, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, driverless cars is without a driver, like Tesla is the most famous one with our friend Elon Musk. Um, we can talk about hiring a car or renting a car. Fiona said Hi, we can hire a car or rent a car. The, the kind of expression, everything's going in that direction. Everything is going in that direction. So everything is following that idea. With global warming, everything's going in that direction. Um, there was the expression to become redundant. So if something becomes redundant, then you basically don't need it anymore. Um, so if licenses become redundant, we don't need licenses. Maybe it's true. Who knows? Um, Fiona talked about manual cars. It's just that's the one with the gear stick. Um, if you're a driver, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry. <laughs> and what's the opposite of manual? Automatic, right? Automatic cars. And then... I just saw a message from Red One who said, pain in the ass, what's that? <laughs> a pain in the ass is a big problem. Your ass is your bum, but we say a pain in the ass is a big problem. And when something becomes mainstream is a great expression. When it becomes basically becomes popular or in, in popular in everyday usage. So I'll just put that up as well. Great, some very, very nice expressions. Um, lovely. I've just, uh, there's a comment from PC, P- PC official. Keith plus Fiona, Kiona's virtual coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's nice. Amila um, says, pretty nice conversation, both of you. <laughs> Great. Notorious for, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot what I said, notorious. Ku Yen Che says it's notorious for something means it's famous for in a bad way right normally in a bad way um any other comments worth bringing up here there's probably lots here tesla what does tesla mean ah for lucky great question um it's tesla it's it's the the brand name if you like of the company run by elon musk and they're all about developing electric cars and space travel now there's a nice question. Fiona, fancy space travel? 
Never. No way. You would not get me in a space rocket. No way. Why not? Oh, no. God, that would just be terrifying. I, I can't. I'm terrified of driving, let alone getting <laughs> in a... No, I just wouldn't trust that at all. But imagine no. the view. Once you get up into outer space, the view will be stunning. Oh, no. It's not worth it. Not uh, worth it. I don't know. What do your viewers think? Let's ask them. Guys, yeah, would you really like mean. to go into space? Who, put up your hands <laughs> or write <laughs> me if you would like to go into outer space. We'll have to wait a minute. Oh, Facebook user says redundant means lay off with compensation. Yes, that's right. Redundant has different meanings. So to become redundant means you lose your job, but you get compensation. Um, but it can also mean in a more looser way that you don't need it anymore. Yes. Why not? Shakun says, why not? I can't share your comment again, unfortunately. Um, yes, avec qui manger? Some must be a French viewer, I'm guessing, says yes. Amila says, absolutely. Sator says, exactly. Gul Safa says, I don't want. <laughs> so you and Fiona are on the same page. Uh, Kiriako says, no, I have a fear of flying. Yeah, uh -huh. a fear of flying. So a rocket will be even worse, right? Because I think the, the vibrations of the rocket is quite strong, right? I think. And I was listening to Elon Musk the other day, and I think he says that even the, the passengers, the tourists who go into space have to have some kind of astronaut training so not well, full yeah. training but they need to be trained on on what to expect and how to cope with it interesting Bit it's bad. an interesting it's a ielts question isn't it again about is is it worth spending all this money on space travel when yeah. everything's going wrong here on earth shouldn't we be investing that money um you know, here first before exploring other planets? That's, that's a really interesting question, I think. It, it is a good question, yeah. And I've always <laughs> thought, no, no we, should, we should focus on this planet, sort out this planet mm. first before space. Um, Definitely. But I have heard arguments that, you know, space exploration allows us to understand our planet better. So there are things we can discover in space that help us understand the science and history of our planet that help us solve the problems um, but it must be one of the most expensive investments a government makes to go to space absolutely i mean billions and billions i think ah, oh, that could just solve all of the world's problems couldn't it yeah so you might find one useful thing by going to space but if you use that money on earth wow what a difference it would make to exactly. so many people's lives. Yeah. It would make a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Kinwood Yi Lin says, Yes, I would love to have a space adventure. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. I'm going to throw up one last expression for everybody out there. That was a nice one we had just at the end. It would make all the difference. I think you said it would make all the difference. Um, which is similar to it would be worth it or it, it would it would have a big impact. It might be better. It would make all the difference. Nice expression. Very natural English, I think. Nice. Good. So lots of interesting language, some interesting questions and a very interesting conversation, actually. I'd like to carry on, but we are going to kind of run out of time. Um, I'm just going to have a quick ask to everybody out there. Do you have any specific questions you would like to ask Fiona, given her expertise? Um, anything you would like to ask her while she's still with us? Let's have a look. <laughs> the trouble is that the... the the comments come in like a, a few minutes later. That's okay. Let's have a look. I'm tired of this planet. I want to experience another planet after dying. 
Davu. That's very, very deep. I'm tired of this planet. I want to experience another planet after dying. <laughs> yeah. Anjali says, yes, so the humans can damage other planets too. Mm. Very good point. Very good point. Ilmra says, I had my test yesterday. I used lots of phrases you taught. Great. Good luck. I hope it goes well. Let's see. Any other questions coming up? Oh, Emmy's got a question, but I think, Emmy, because you may have missed the introduction. Fiona, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Wales. From Wales. Yeah. Um, Cunyet says, Fiona is a nice person. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sarab, oh, his question, I guess, is a, is a is it an advantage if cars are banned in the city centre? <clears throat> mm. I, I think it is. I think they've done quite a lot of research on that, and they, they, it's kind of rejuvenated city centres, hasn't it, when they ban cars? Yeah. Absolutely. They thought it would take away all the traffic, but it didn't. I mean, all the footfall going to people shopping and stuff, but it didn't. It brought more people into the shops and... In, in Colchester, we've got a high street. It's a lovely high street, but it's got huge buses going through it and cars. And it's, it, when they closed it off one day, it was like a different place. And people were just relaxed and wandering around and happy to spend their money in the shops. It was just a completely different experience. Uh, absolutely. That's the key. I think shopping is an experience. It's not mm. about shopping. It's the, the experience of walking down the streets, the relaxed atmosphere. I think it's much more beneficial if there's not big buses and pollution i mean obviously there's the there's less noise pollution less um, air pollution but also you get a better quality shopping experience so to speak um yeah, yeah. i mean you could sit out in the cafes and stuff and you can hear each other speak and you don't have to worry about crossing the road and yeah. what a difference i i think it would make yeah absolutely it's, it's is that, I'm just, I think that Saurabh is my student, so I'm going to say hi. It might not be. <laughs> yeah, it might be. If it is, great. <laughs> There's a question here from Mayuri. How can I reach out for writing improvements? Um, Mayura, I think there's just so much stuff online for writing improvements i mean i've got quite a lot on my website if you want to go there as a, a place to start i've got like a list of resources there and um you know things like collocation websites and lots of different sites related to um helping you with writing so that might be a, a first place to go um great i'm going to put up your um website up here it's so just double confirm this with me. It's um IELTSETC.com, yes. right? Yes. So ETC stands <clears throat> for uh, exam training courses. Um yes, but but there's a lot of resources on the page. There's resources for listening, for for reading. Um so if you go there, I I've, I've just got loads of stuff to get you started, yeah. Great. So if you can see that guys, it's um it's ielsetc.com um a few people are asking how they can get in touch with you could you share her site channel that's it um if you look for this picture i'll just put it up there that's the the logo from the site you'll recognize it you will see fiona all over social media i've never seen anybody quite as active on social media whether it's <laughs> instagram um youtube podcasts you're all over the place twitter you're everywhere I am. I, I do love it. But um, everybody loves your show. So uh, you're, you've concentrated everything in one place. I like what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. I don't know if this is a personal question, Fiona, but it's from Davoud. He says, are you vaccinated against COVID? I haven't had the vaccination. No, um, I've just gone 50. So I've got to wait in line. Yeah. Um, we're going down by ages. I think it's reached uh, 60 at the moment. So I've still got to wait, I think, till May, I think. I don't know. How about you? Well, we're slower over here. Spain is uh, much, much, much slower than the UK. I'm in the same situation. I've turned 50, so I'm still waiting. They're still doing the 80-year-olds the in Spain. Uh -huh. um, and obviously the frontline workers are still being vaccinated. Um, I think by summer, possibly, um, 
But for example, my brother and sister and sister-in-law who are late 50s uh, are going today to get vaccinated and they live oh. in Manchester in the UK. Oh, yeah. oh that's good. So they're, um, it's going really fast in the UK, the vaccinations. It is. They've got a lot of making up to do, though. I think they've made such a mess of COVID. So they're, they're investing a lot of money into trying to put it right, I think. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Hopefully it all works out. Yes. Right. A final comment. Um, and this is, I guess, for a lot of people. Farin just says, dears. I'm, I love that, dears. I'm <laughs> going to, I think, take the main test on Saturday. Wish me luck. Oh, good luck. Yeah, good luck, Faringes. And yeah, actually, everybody who's taking the test this weekend, um, good luck to all of you. You know, I hope it goes really, really well. Um, fantastic. Oh, here's a here's a question. Sorry, last one then. There's always a last one. Is there a language called Welsh? Rydwyn siarad Cymraeg a man wahollol different wahanol i Saesneg, so a do. Go on, what did you just say? I do speak Welsh and it's a completely different language from English. Yes. I did not understand anything. <clears throat> yeah. It's beautiful it is, language. It is a lovely language. It's, it's very complex. And um, I think there's about 10% of the population speak it. There's right. 3 million people in Wales. And so not many people speak it. Um, but it is a really beautiful ancient language. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's spoken in schools. It's every, All subjects are taught through Welsh. Right. Um, but it's not a dialect of English. Lots of people say it's just a dialect. It's, mm. it's a completely, it's like French or German mm. totally or Arabic. Language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, listen, great, Fiona. We're going to finish up here for today. But thank you very much for joining us. Um, really, really useful and very, very interesting. Well, thanks for inviting me. And just want to say good luck to all of your students. I know how much they get from your lessons, Keith. I watch them and, and they're amazing. So I'm mm -hmm. sure with, with you behind them, they'll they'll do very well in their tests. Well, and also with you behind them now, um, if, if they you know want to get in touch with you, um, they can, they can go to your website. I know you've got lots of fantastic resources there. I mean, one of the reasons I, I wanted you to come on the show is because I love the work you do. I think the the professionalism and the quality is fantastic. So guys, do go and check out the website. I know Fiona runs a course there, an academy, if you're interested, you know, especially with help around writing and other skills, that might be a good place to go. So do go and check it out. Great, lovely. Thank you very much, Fiona. Thanks, I'll, Keith. Thank I'll just you. just work out how to um, say goodbye here. We've got to hang up our call, right? <laughs> <laughs> got it. Great. Take care. We'll speak to you soon. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Great. So that was... Hello, come back. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I'm back. Yes. Okay, great. That was um, Fiona. Thank you very, very much, Fiona, for joining us. Lovely. I hope um, you enjoyed the conversation and that you picked out some interesting vocabulary. Um, that's really, really interesting and much appreciated. So I will just remind you the vocabulary that we're doing, by the way, we've still got half an hour so that normally these classes last about an hour and a half. So I will be carrying on. But just to let you know, all of this language um, I put into a PDF and then I share that on my website for free, obviously. So after... Well, a few hours later, um, this afternoon or this evening, um, you'll be able to go to my website. It's the keithspeakingacademy.com as well. Um, and you can go and download all of the notes that we've got here. So you just go into the free live lessons area and you can download the latest notes and all the previous um, lessons that we, we've done here as well. They're all there for download. So just to let you know, you can get those on the website. Brilliant. Um, let me just come back. And I do recommend you go and visit um, Fiona's website. I think it's it's well worth doing. Look out for that sign. It's ielsetc.com. Lots of great stuff there. Okay. Brilliant. What's next? 
Barabshi bidu 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 bi bum bum bum. Next up, we're going to do. Um, I'm just going to check actually if you've got any questions coming up. Dorsa says it was useful. Thank you. Great. Brilliant. Stay with us. We're not leaving yet. Stay with us. <laughs> Um, so guys, I'm going to carry on. We've got another half an hour. Let me um, carry on and bring in over here. Bring this over here. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to have a look a little bit at collocations, right? Because we mentioned lots of language there. Collocations on the topic of transport, some other things you may want to use, right? To get stuck in the traffic is when you cannot move because the cars are bumper to bumper, remember? So you get stuck in the traffic um, because there is a traffic jam, which is the next one. A traffic jam, literally too many cars not moving. A travel itinerary is another interesting collocation travel itinerary. The itinerary is really the route. The travel itinerary or the route. Let me just put that up there. So when you go, for example, if you imagine you're going on a trip, right? And on your trip, you're going from London to Paris to Australia to Canada and then back to London. That is your itinerary. It's the route London, Paris, Australia, Canada, London, that is your route or your itinerary. So it's very good when you're planning a trip, obviously, to have a travel itinerary. We talk about travel abroad, um, obviously traveling, you've got domestic travel and to travel abroad, that's the verb, but you can also have domestic travel. But here, travel is a noun rather than a verb, right? Domestic travel. Whereas here, it's to, it's a verb. <clears throat> Great. Now, travel back and forth, which I mentioned at the very beginning. So to travel back and forth means to go between two places, right? If that makes sense. To go between two places continually, let's say or many times. So when do you travel back and forth? You will travel back and forth if you live in Manchester and you catch the train to London every day and then you catch the train home to Manchester every day, then you're traveling back and forth, back and forth. It's like up and down, up and down, to and from, to and from, back and forth. You're traveling back and forth means you're making the trip there and coming back lots of times. Um, so a lot of people who commute, right? Your commute is the trip from your work, from your home to your work. If you commute, then you travel back and forth. I travel back and forth to work every day. I travel back and forth to London every day, right? So notice it's to travel back and forth to somewhere a lot or maybe every day i travel back and forth nice the final collocation is to travel light to travel light is when you you go on a trip and you don't take very much right you don't take very much maybe you just take a very light bag or just a very small bag you travel light um the opposite is not anything. The opposite is you just take a lot of things, right? Sometimes when we go on a family trip, I see my daughter with five bags and it looks like she's going for a month and we're like taking a, a two day trip. She doesn't travel light. She has to take her school books. She has to take her some of the toys. She takes all the clothes. She takes the kitchen sink all of these things and that's just taking too much the opposite like me is i just have a little bag i travel light <laughs> so that's also good collocations to travel light brilliant 
let me flash through to idioms. I want to take us on to idioms next, right? Um, da, da, da. Idioms about transport. And we can share some of those that you have. Um, and yeah, and then we'll go through and have a look at these. Oh, good questions here as you go in. Can we use travel back and forth in writing tasks too or just in speaking? Ah, um, you can use in writing, yeah. It's not really an idiom. So idioms tend to be spoken, right? It's the nature of idiomatic language. That tends to be spoken. Spoken. This is not an idiom. It's just It's just an expression. So I would say, yes, you can use that in writing. I used to travel back and forth when I was working. Yes, yes, good. That is correct. Absolutely correct. Good. Can we say to travel dark? I've never heard that. Never heard it. Travel dark. I wonder what you mean by that, to travel dark. No, and it doesn't seem to come up as a regular collocation. Don't know that one. Uh, yo, yo, Keith travels back and forth to Spain and England. Yes, yes, I do. I travel back and forth to England or to Spain and England. Exactly. Yes. Could you brief about weather while traveling? Yes, but probably not in today's lesson. I think we'll do another one on that at a different time. OK, somebody's picked out in the nick of time. Yes. So let's have a look at these. Um, I'll start at the top. My my wife is a backseat driver. What is a backseat driver? OK, Let, let's imagine the situation, right? Here I am driving, right? Passenger seat is maybe a friend. The back seat is my daughter and my wife and I'm driving. And then my I'm kind of deciding which way do I go? Do I go right or left? And then my wife leans over and goes, turn left, turn left. Now, there, there. No, be careful. Watch out. The light's on red. Stop. Look out for the car. And I'm like, who's driving? Me or you? Me. But that kind of person who's giving advice when you're driving, when you're driving, right, is a backseat driver. So somebody who's always telling you what to do when you're driving, only when you're driving, right? Um, so we say that person is a backseat driver. Also, then this is more general, right, is in the driver's seat. At last I'm in the driver's seat. In the driver's seat means to be in control, but not just driving. It can be for any situation. Um, maybe you're in a meeting and your boss wants you to present and to chair the meeting and your boss says, right, you're in the driver's seat, go ahead, right? You're in control, go ahead. You're in the driver's seat, driver's seat. The S's kind of connect together like one sound, the driver's seat. You're in the driver's seat, okay? It means to be in control. The next one in the nick of time, right? On time or is in is in time, not on. Well, on time is exactly the right time. In time is just before the right time. Um, in the nick of time means just in time, right? Like seconds before. So if your train is at eight o'clock and you arrive at seven fifty nine, you are in the nick of time. It's a nice expression. And it's one of those that has a, a linking, right? Nick of, nick of, in the nick of time. Try it with me. Nick of, nick of time. In the nick of time. I arrived in the nick of time. Nice, that's it. So that's just in time. The other one we can say is we made it to the airport on time, on time, which means just on the right time, by the skin of our teeth. Teeth? Skin? Teeth don't have skin. Idiomatic, right? By the skin of our teeth um, means 
in the nick of time, right? When something is very, very, very close. We made it to the airport on time by the skin of our teeth. It means you just managed to do it. Um, I did it. Often, it's about meeting a deadline. Very often. So you have to give your essay to your teacher um, on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock and you rush to give it to the teacher at 8.55 Wednesday morning and you go, oh, I did it by the skin of my teeth, by the skin of my teeth, right? I just managed to do it. I just managed to meet the deadline. Great. Good question. What does just mean here? Just in time, just managed. Um, just, mm, just is a, oh, how do I explain just? Just in time means not a long way in time, but very close in time. Again, so if the train leaves at nine o'clock and I get there at 8 30, I'm in time, right? I have 30 minutes. But if that time difference is very, very small, I get there instead of nine o'clock, I get at 8.59, I'm just in time, right? The difference is very, very small. Just is like almost, says Celine. Yeah, similar, similar, yes. <laughs> it's muted. Hello, what's muted? Right, I think we're good. Almost, similar to almost, yes. Good, so there, those are different idioms we've got about transport. Do you guys know any idioms about transport or travel? Idioms tend to be speaking uh, at the tunji. It's a good question, but you're asking about idioms. Are they for speaking or writing? They tend to be for speaking, not so much for writing. Some of them can be, but by and large, I would only use them in speaking. Yeah. <laughs> Shah says, I joined this session in the nick of time. David says, just on or just in? Well, they're two different meanings, right? So to be clear, just on time or just in time? Uh, the answer is both. So David, to your question, is it just on time or just in time is correct? So just on time means you are at the correct time at the correct time, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. In time means before the correct time. So if the class starts at eight o'clock and you're here before eight o'clock, you are in time. If the class starts at eight o'clock and you are here exactly at eight o'clock, you are on time. That's the difference, yeah. Hmm. Any other? I have itchy. Ah, yes, I have itchy feet. Itchy feet. <laughs> itchy feet. Yeah. That's a good one. I have itchy feet in the singular, Sana. Itchy feet means that you like traveling. When you say somebody has itchy feet, because remember, feet is the plural, it's already the plural, means that I love traveling. So a lot of young people get itchy feet because they want to travel. In this time of coronavirus, a lot of people are getting itchy feet, right? They want to travel. They want to go on holiday. They want to visit the world, but they can't. So frustrating. Another one to hit the road. 
It's already six o'clock and time we hit the, the road. To hit the road doesn't mean hit the road. It means to start your journey or to leave. To leave or start a journey. Whoa, not a, <laughs> not a jury. Um, yeah, so imagine you're, you know, you're visiting a friend's house. You're visiting to say hello. And then you say, listen, six o'clock, it's time to hit the road. It's time to leave. Um, it can be, yeah, any situation like that. Or if you're starting a long trip, you know, let's hit the road at six o'clock. Let's start the journey or the trip at six o'clock. Hit the open road. Good. Peak hour. Yes. We hit the road right on time. Yeah, good. Anjali has got a nice one here. Um, the train leaves at seven, so I have to get up at the crack of dawn to get to the station on time. Yeah. At the crack of dawn is very, very early. It's with an A, though, not an O. Yeah. Um, I have to get up at the crack of dawn. Of dawn. Wait a minute. I'll just add this. I have to get up at the crack of dawn which means very, very early. And Jali, thank you very much for that. Let me wind this up. Equals very early. I get up at the crack of dawn every day. Actually, that's not true. I get up about seven o'clock. For me, the crack of dawn is like five o'clock. That's when it's really early. Brilliant. Good. So, guys, we've done, um, we've looked at, a lot, actually. We've looked at idioms, lots of different language. Um, I'm going to move us on to do our next activity, the next thing I'd like to do with you. And the next thing I want to do is this one. It's that time of the day. It's that time of the day. It's the uh, model answer time or sample answers, if you like. So this is where I'm going to ask you to ask me a question um, about transport, right? That's the idea. A question about transport that you would like me to answer. Um, and I will try and answer on the spot here and now. So take a, take a minute or a few seconds, type down a question about transport and I will try and give you an answer. Great. Oh, nice. <clears throat> wow. Punith, where to find phrasal verbs in my website? Go to the live lessons and you'll see that in the top menu. The live lessons has all the language notes from all the classes. That's where you'll find them. They're a part of the lesson, right? Right. Ooh. Right, okay, I'm going to try this one. This is from Dr. Vinita, who asks, Dr. Vinita says, what type of transport is very popular in your country? It's a nice question. That could be like um, a part one question, right? Let me uh, try and get this up on the screen. 
Lovely. What type of transport is very popular in your country? And I'm just going to change the font. Great. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Venita. Physiotherapy, Juan Noon. Lovely. Great. Um, OK. <clears throat> I've got no time to think, right? You're straight in the test. OK, um, it's a good question. I think in in my country, I mean, talking about England, probably the trains are one of the most popular kinds of transport. Um, lots of people like to take the train, um, the intercity rail system. Um, it's relatively cheap, um, although unfortunately the, the the trains are notorious for being late and i think that lack of punctuality is a real downside for catching the train but despite that it still is a very popular way of getting around the country right good so part one answer quite short and neat talked about punctual getting around the country um being on time um, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Remember, I will transcribe these notes and they all go into the notes, the PDF at the end. Great. Let's take another question. Yeah, this is a nice one. It's one that we talked a little bit about, um, but we can, I think it's a good one to do. Um, so Andrian Arison, this one is a great question. How would you think the future of transport will be in the decade to come? So let me also put this one up here. How do you think the future of transport? How? I'm going to change that because I think it's better. What do you think the future of transport will be in the next decade to come? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Andrea Narison. That's a great question. It's a future question, so it's probably a part three question. So I can go on and talk a bit, maybe for half a minute or more. So um, let me see. What do you think? Well, talking about the future of transport in the, in the next decade, I think the number one thing that's going to change is the emergence of driverless cars. Without a doubt, um, I think all the pressure on countries around the world to tackle global change is going to lead to a, an increase in the, in the number of electric cars and also driverless cars. For example, Tesla, one of the biggest and richest um, modern technology organizations in the world, um, are developing driver, driverless cars at the moment. And they seem to be doing a very good job of it. I think it's going to be super convenient for people. So I think that's probably the most important. In addition to that, um, I reckon the space travel is going to be the future of tourism. So rather than people traveling to other countries, I think a certain number of people will be traveling into space. Not many in the next decade, but certainly in the next 50 years, a lot more. Right. OK. Now, that's that's interesting because I was starting to think about 50 years in the future, but your question was the next decade. So on retrospect, space travel might not be the best example, but certainly driverless cars, electric cars. Um, I don't know, planes, aeroplanes, electric aeroplanes. Let's talk about that, right, that we might have electric aeroplanes because we have to, there's this urgency to tackle global warming and climate change and clearly the transportation industry um, are, are are guilty if you like I mean they cause a lot of the problem um, I know not helped by the oil and gas industry but anyway <laughs> let's move on um, great good I'm going to move on because that is two um, model answers which is great it gives us time to move on to our final activity. Thank you very much for suggesting the question.
stop. Thank you for suggesting the questions. I'm going to move on to Kahoot. It's time to have a look at Kahoot, which is our next and final activity. This is where we're going to review some of the language that we've looked at today to see if you were really awake and find out who's been sleeping or nip, nip, napping. Have you been napping? I hope not. Um, have you been paying attention? So I'll show you what we're doing. Kahoot, right, is a great online game. It's a multiple choice where you choose A, B, C or D. You can do it on your mobile phone. And basically, we're going to play the game together. I'll show you the questions and you have to answer. Um, where you'll need to go is here. It's kahoot.it. And that's if you go there, that's you need two windows open. You need to go to Kahoot and then you can sign in to play. I will give you the game pin where you can play. OK, let me take you here. You can see it. So it's Kahoot. When you go in, um, let's do personalized. Do a nickname. Choose a nickname that you would like to use. Go to Kahoot.it or you can download the app. And then you put in your PIN number. So you have a name and the PIN number is 115-8095. So that's it. The game PIN number 115 8095 and you just have to add uh, a nickname and then you can you can get in don't worry if you can't get in you can still participate you can just put your answer in the comment section at the as normal They're like Samurai is talking about Hyperloops. That's another Elon Musk dream, isn't it? The Hyperloops, which will replace possibly the underground and the metro system. Pierre, you use Kahoot. Great. Do you like it? <laughs> Shakun, you're a speedy goat. <laughs> nice. Right, we've got lots of people in. Adrian Harrison is the dili diligent dragon. <laughs> cool. Okay, let's start. Let's get going straight away. Let me just turn this off. And let's begin the first question. Transport. I like to travel blank plane. I like to travel blank plane. You've got 30 seconds. Christina is an aquatic puffin. Look at you. <laughs> Dorsa, well done. Aida, nice. Manjula, good. David, good. No, be careful. <laughs> David, be careful. Chris, be careful. Right, interesting. So it was by, to travel by plane, right? Um, not to and not with and not on, right? You can say to get on the plane, right? We talk about getting on the plane, get on but travel by, always travel by, yeah? Okay, so well done. Most of you got that. And the knowing panda is right at the top. Knowing panda, hero condor, second, Dr. Sable, third. Next question. I hate getting blank in traffic. I hate getting blank in traffic. And the picture should help you. You can see the cars bumper to bumper. There's a traffic jam. What do you think the answer is? Also, well done again. Vishal, nice. Well done. Rebecca, good answer. 
Ted Mon, well done. Look at that. Very good. Much, much better. Yes. 149 got stuck to so get stuck in traffic. I hate getting stuck in traffic. Well done. Brilliant. So knowing Panda is still up there, but be careful. There's a lively hen just below you. <laughs> Question number three. How do you get blank your city? How do you get blank your city? So me and Fiona asked each other this question. How do you get blank your city? Celine, you're right, you are brilliant students. Ayavana, well done. Sachin, well done. Stella, nice. Again, fantastic answers. How do you get around your city? Yeah. So, you know, do you take the bus? Do you take the taxi? How do you get around your city? How do you get through? 28 people said through. How do you get through your city? I mean, grammatically, it's correct. You can say, how do you get through your city? Um, but it's just very strange. And it has the idea that you start here and get to the end of the city, which is not really the meaning. The meaning is how do you move around the city? How do you get around? So we wouldn't say through, right? We'd say get around your city. That would be the common question. Let's check out the scores. Knowing Panda is top, a blue mercat has a streak with three correct answers in a row. Interesting. Why are you telling me this? <laughs> Hero Conda and Happy Dragon are up there. Good. Let's move on. I think it's the last question. Four of four. We arrived in the blank of time and caught the train. We arrived in the blank of time and caught the train. I think... Most of you will get this. I'm feeling confident you, you, you will get this right. <laughs> well done, Jerome and Sonal. Danya. Shakun. Dan. Kajal. Oh, impressive. Nick. Exactly. We arrived in the nick of time. I see a few of you fell for my trick, which is tick, which sounds similar, but it's not tick. It's nick. We arrived in the nick of time. Well done. Most of you got that. Nice. Let's check out the winners then. Third place. Knowing hair. Happy dragon. Second. First. That panda, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It's the knowing panda. Well done. The Knowing Panda. Brilliant. So that's nice. A good way to review. I hope you got the right answers. If you want, you can repeat that on your phone and you can check it again. It's a good way to really consolidate, right, to really get the deeper learning of the, those expressions you've learned. So that brings us to the end today. We are finishing up. Listen, um, for those of you on YouTube, please do remember to subscribe. Turn on the notification button and you will find out as soon as I release any new videos. This Saturday, uh, about midday, we'll have the video all about pronunciation, and it really gives a lot of information about pronunciation for IELTS and how to improve. It's a long video, but it's going to be well worth your time, I promise you. So check out on Saturday. Um, if you want to get uh, a speaking partner, motivation, um, practice your English, come and join us on Facebook, right? We have a Facebook group. It's Keith's Mastermind Community, just focused on IELTS speaking. Um, quite a lot of activity there. There's lots of things you can share. Your Well, some people share the questions they've had. We're sharing questions and answers, language, lots of learning. I think it's a, a nice, a very nice group and one I strongly recommend you come and join. Do remember to come and check out the website, Keith Speaking Academy, um, and you can download the lessons 
um, there from today. Give me about two hours, right? Maybe a bit more, two or three hours to collect everything, upload it, make the PDF, put it on the website. It takes a bit of time, but in about three hours or even tomorrow, you can come and collect that. Um, just to remind you where it is, right? On the website, Key Speaking Academy, just go to the free live lessons, which is up there, um, and you'll be able to download them. Go all the way down and you can download the notes there. Or you can just watch the lesson. If you're on a mobile phone, you may just prefer to go in and click on the lesson. Last week we did shopping, right? Um, and you can get all the information to talk fluency, fluently about shopping. It's all here. Um, there's a lot as well. I think it's really, really interesting. We have essential vocabulary, speaking questions, speaking topic, preferred da, 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 idioms, and so on and so on. Great. That's it. What else do I need to tell you? I think the last thing is just to check in with your comments. Some of you are doing the test. That's right. You're doing the test this weekend. Best of luck. Fingers crossed. Break a leg. I hope it goes really, really well. Um, it's As always, it's been really fun and uh, I've enjoyed being with you today. Remember, keep turning up every day. Keep practicing every day as much as you can. It really is difficult, IELTS. I mean, the, the preparation is hard, um, but it doesn't have to be like really, really hard. You know, I try to make it as much fun and easier as possible, but you always need, it's language learning. You always need to practice and practice as much as you can. And that's the idea of the live lessons to give you a chance every week to come and practice. Okay, great. Thank you very much for, for coming today. Do take care and I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.